In this video, we're going to discuss how we use energy diagrams to help us determine whether we have endothermic or exothermic reactions. Here we have an energy diagram, and we're going to label the parts of this diagram. First thing that we have is potential energy is on the Y axis. On the X axis is the reaction process, progress. As the reaction goes forward, what is the energy that is either consumed or produced? All right, so let's label the parts of this graph. Here we have the potential energy of our reactants, which uh, we have on the left-hand side of the graph. We have the potential energy of our products on the right-hand side of the graph. The energy that is required for the reactants to uh, begin to form product is what we call the activation energy. And it is the difference in the potential energy from the reactants to what we call the, let's say what we call, oh, I'm already in pen. What we call the activated complex or we can say it's the reaction intermediate. Interaction, the um, reaction intermediate. So there's an intermediate phase in a reaction where atoms are close enough to each other to shift electrons and rearrange, and that's where we need the activation energy to take us from our pro our reactants to this this stage. Okay. The difference between the potential energy of the products and the reactants is going to be our delta H of the reaction. And from our previous video, we stated that the delta H of the reaction is going to be the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. Let's do, uh, let's take a look at the difference between endothermic and exothermic reactions. If you remember from our previous video, we mentioned that in endothermic reactions, energy has to go into the system, and we have a positive delta H, whereas for exothermic reactions, we have a negative delta H and energy is released. So let's take a look here and determine whether energy is either released or absorbed in this reaction to help us determine if this is an endothermic or exothermic reaction. Well, let's give some arbitrary numbers for our, our products and our reactants. Let's say this is 10, we'll say kilojoules. Uh, and here we have 100 kilojoules. So remember that H is still the potential energy, enthalpy is potential energy. So if we take a look here, we know that delta H is going to be the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants, which would be 10 minus 100, which gives us minus 90 kilojoules, just based off of our arbitrary numbers that we've given. So what do we have here? We've got a negative value. So that must mean that this is an exothermic reaction. And what can we say? We can say that energy is released. Why? Because the potential energy of our products is less than the potential energy of our reactants. So what this means is that our reactants have lower bond disassociation energy than our products. And what this means is that these reactants, are they really want to react because they have high potential energy, whereas our products have low potential energy. And once they become products, they're not likely to revert into those reactants. So for an, endo, for an exothermic 
reaction, the potential energy of the products is less than the potential energy of the reactants. Now, how do we represent this with a chemical reaction? Here we have an example of the combustion of glucose during respiration. And we can write this two ways. Notice that we've got glucose reacts with six moles of oxygen to give six moles of carbon dioxide, six moles of water. Well, one mole of glucose reacts. In this example of the combustion of glucose during respiration, we see that one mole of glucose reacts with six moles of oxygen to produce six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. We can have our delta H written separately. And notice it is minus 2,803 kilojoules per mole. However, we can also write this reaction in another way, in which instead of, we, instead of writing delta H as a negative value, notice that because energy is released, it is also a product. So notice here, it is written as one of the products. And remember, when we have a plus sign in the chemical reaction, it's just separating our reactants and products from each other. Okay. Here we have uh, another graph, it's similar, but it's the opposite of what we had before. So let's go back over here. We have the potential, potential energy, which is enthalpy. And uh, we know that the potential energy of our products is greater than the potential energy of our reactants. So if we were to subtract the two, we would have a positive delta H, right? So using those same arbitrary units, um, we have 100 kilojoules minus 10 kilojoules, which gives us a positive 90 kilojoules. So this is an endothermic reaction because our delta H is positive. Looking at an example of how we would write the chemical reaction, we have the glucose production during photosynthesis. So notice that in our previous slide, we had um, the breakdown of, of glucose during respiration, where we release energy. Well, the same reaction in the opposite direction now is going to require the addition of energy for this reaction to take place. So notice that we can write delta H as a positive number, or we can write it in our reaction where the energy is written as a reactant. So if you see an equation with energy written as a reactant or the word heat as a reactant, then you know that it's an endothermic reaction. Okay, why don't you take a moment and based on the information that I provided to you in the last few slides, fill in the um, blanks on the reaction coordinate diagram with the appropriate letters and give the values associated with each. There's no units, that's fine. Just an idea so you can see how to read these types of uh, diagrams. Okay, let's see what you got. So the potential energy of our reactants, remember, is always going to be on the left-hand side of our uh, reaction. And the, the value of that is zero. Uh, this could be calories, kilojoules, joules, it doesn't matter. We're just looking at how to read these graphs. The potential, potential energy of the products are always going to be written on the right-hand side of the reaction coordinate. And if we were to go across, we can see that that value is 60. The delta H of our reaction is going to be the difference between our products and our reactants. And if we calculate what that is, our products are 60, our reactants are zero, 
then the delta H of this reaction is 60. Last, the activation energy is always found up here at the top hump, and that is the energy required to start this reaction, and it always comes from, the energy is from the reactants to the activated complex, and we're going to have 120 as a value for our activation energy. Is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Endothermic. Why? Because our potential energy of the products is greater than the potential energy of the reactant. All right, take a few moments and fill out the answers to these questions, um, and I will come back and see if you've got the right answers. Okay, let's check your answers. What is the, the, the uh, activation energy for the forward reaction? Forward reaction is going in the forward direction. So that activation energy would be 80 minus 52, which gives us a positive 28 kilojoules per mole. Activation energy always has to be positive because you have to put the energy in to break the bonds. All right, what would now be the activation energy for the reverse reaction? I'm going in the opposite direction and that would be, so here would be our reactants versus our uh, activation energy. And we have 80 minus 16, which gives us 64 kilojoules. Next is what is the enthalpy change of delta H for the forward reaction? Well, that's this value here. See, let me write that in. Delta H forward. This was activation energy reverse. And this is activation energy forward. All right. So we can say that the delta H for the forward reaction is going to be the products minus the reactants which is going to be 16 minus 52 gives us a negative 36 kilojoules per mole. What if, we, what if we're looking for this change in the reverse reaction? Remember, still the difference between the products and the reactants. But here, these are our reactants, and here are our products. So it's the same value, just with a different sign. And it's going to be positive, because going in the reverse direction, going in the reverse direction, we have to put the energy into the system. All right. So what can we say about the forward reaction? Is it endothermic or exothermic? The forward reaction is exothermic because why? The energy of the products is less than the energy of the reactants. What about the reverse reaction? It's endothermic. Why? Because the energy of the reactants is lower than the energy of the products. And we can also look at the values of, oops, the values of delta H to help us determine. Forward, delta H is negative. Reverse, delta H is positive. Now, what we didn't discuss in terms of endothermic and exothermic reactions is that exothermic reactions are generally favored meaning that reactions that release energy are more likely to be spontaneous and happen on their own, and they are more a favored reaction. Whereas in a reaction where you have to dump a bunch of energy into it, that's not favorable. Remember, everything in the universe wants to have the least amount of energy that is uh, required for a process to occur. So the forward reaction is going to be favored because it is uh, an exothermic reaction. All right, here, I think it's important for you to draw an energy diagram so that you can see how you uh, 
how you end up calculating or figuring out what the values are um, for the potential energy and the delta H. Let us begin by labeling our, uh, our axes. We know that on the y-axis, it's going to be potential energy. Um, let's give it some values, kilojoules per mole, because that's what our, our values are given in up here. And we know that on the y-axis, y-axis is going to be reaction progress. And in the forward direction. Okay, well, being that our values range from our reactants have to be at 250, we need an additional 100 kilojoules to make our activation energy, and our products are at 250, we can draw, we can use units of 100 to make our hash marks on our, our graph. Let's see, 200, 300, 400. Want to make them about as even as possible. I think I did a pretty good job. And now let's, let's put our points on the graph that we need. So it says the potential energy of our reactants is at 350 kilojoules. So our Potential energy of reactants starts there. The activation energy is 100 kilojoules. Well, that means that I have to add 100 kilojoules into our reactants. So let's say that's about 450. So our activation energy has to come up to about there. And then we have our potential energy of our products, which is at 250 kilojoules. So we can say our reactants our products go about there. So is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, what can we say? The potential energy of our reactants, reactants is greater than the potential energy of our products. So that means that energy is released and we have an exothermic reaction. Let's verify that by determining what the delta H is. Well, delta H is gonna be the difference between products and reactants. So we've got our products are at 250 kilojoules per mole and our Reactants are at 350 kilojoules per mole. So our delta H is going to be negative 100 kilojoules per mole. And that helps to verify that we have an exothermic reaction.